Kingston College. This is how they line up. David Martin in goal. Lewis Watson, Calvin Gardner has come all the way from Cornell College, so he's used to the Montego Bay Sports Complex. Rajiv Savin, Scott McLeod is the only person in that back line from last year. In the middle of the park, Gavin Burton, Jamari Morrison, the skipper, Sajar Blair, and the trio up front, Armania Rogers, Ronaldo Robinson, and Dwayne Atkinson. Most of the experience at Kingston College in their top three. As we take a look at the Excelsior starting lineup now, and it's going to be to Peter Smith in goal, Ryan Picton at the back, as well as Rashawn Amos and DeAndre Burrows, as well as Alex Alexander playing at the left back position. Junior Parker, Rajan Joseph, Jaheim Flemings, and Tariq Duffus, as well as Chevron Smith, will be the five in the middle of the park. And they'll play behind the lone striker in Noel Ratchery, who is formerly of Kingston College. So, again, many storylines as ever when uh, teams compete more so on opening day and what a fixture this is and is expected to be in Kingston College and Excelsior and Excelsior seems as if they're going to be pretty okay with uh, seeing how Kingston College play Love the Bernard would not mind that at all. The head coach of KC looking calm and relaxed. I guess you can be when you are when you're champions. Yeah, so you know how to get there. But um, when we look at the both teams and the system of um, informers that they play and we've seen them set out at the start of the game uh, with Excel saying with a 4-5-1, 5 in midfield. It's a situation where they will seek to match Kingston's college with three in the center of the park. But also, the two wide players would seek to exploit that system for Kingston College, which plays a 4 3 3, which has three central midfielders, no natural wide players, but the full backs would come up there. Uh, so, it would be interesting to see that. Well, here's a free kick, and the keeper watching that all the way, and then, well, losing a hold of it. And going over the top to Peter Smith there. Nervous stop for the Excelsior custodian. Not an issue of him looking in the sun or anything. He just stretched that and got enough to get it over the bar. And away from the danger area. Here's the corner kick. And uh, wasted there. The college did play around this time last week. Took up against St. George's College, ended up losing that game by a goal to nil. Of course, the Europa Cup. Pre-season fixture between. It, it, it does, and it does help the, the, the smaller schools, so to speak, in terms of um, keeping their players and building a program. So often you build a program and your players are snatched away from you. Kingston College doing most of the running in the opening six minutes. Bench looking into the sun for the time being. Armania Rogers and challenged. Came to Kingston College primarily, primarily to do track and field. With Armania Rogers. But lo and behold, his first love is football. How often have we seen that with a lot of athletes? They go for the sports with the glamour, the glory. Um, but I like Rogers. Atkinson, Dwayne Atkinson, with the delivery inside the area, not cleared properly. Excelsior trying to come away with it now. The player was going one way and the ball the other, but he was offside at any rate. A 
and in terms of Rogers, I, I remember last season he came off the bench a couple of times um, but I guess with all the transition taking place he would have been uh, uh, we expect him to be a regular start of the season a player with a lot of energy and I think expect today that he's going to give a lot of trouble to this Excelsior back line McLeod here's an opportunity that handled well in the end by Pepito Smith that effort from Jamari Morrison didn't quite go as he would have liked. I think what you're seeing down here from Kingston College is a lot of shooting, not finishing, and, and it, there's a difference in the sports here in terms of shooting and finishing. They're not showing the composure and picking that spot. Robinson on the left. Need some support possibly. Interrupt, interrupted by Rogers. And Robinson was a little bit upset that his striker came into the way there. I think Rogers did, did better work than the excessive defenders in stopping. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he would have. Well, that's a clearance. When you come right back. Lazar Blair. Looking for Dwayne Atkinson. Again, one of those players that want to make more of an impact at Kingston College. Where's the number 13 for luck? Superstitious one. Player is down for Excelsior. I wonder if you see his knee heavily strapped. And if an old injury that has acted up. Well, he's actually taking out the bandage, so I'm not oh. sure if it's much of an injury as opposed to just a stoppage. <laughs> yeah. Probably just hampering his running there. Probably telling the coaching staff that. A little bit too protective of whatever would have caused him wrapping his leg so heavily. It could have been too tight as well. And judging from this opening 11 minutes, we can see there's a lot of energy in this Kingston College team. They hustle and hurry their opponent. Alvin Gardner giving up the ball. Here's Excelsior trying to make KC pay. The shot is wide. It's a good move there from Excelsior. Good defense pitting pass. I just think the execution at the last minute, he did not make contact with that ball as he would want. Lovely ball. And it went into that half space, which is between center off, center off and, and, and full back. It was a, a scuff shot in the end. Sean Joseph with the effort that was wide of the mark. The vice captain of his team. It was always going to be difficult for Jaheim Fleming to get there. Atkinson picks it up for KC and the staff from the back. Gardner looking to be a little bit more careful. Was a top defender at Cornell College. Led the back line with distinction for Cornell last season. They've won the Champions Cup with them as well as they got the better of Jamaica College. Alvin Gardner, number 27 for Kingston College now. And that's a good addition when you have, when you play the 4 4 4 3 3 system, you really want to have solid defenders. 
because it's really a formation which expresses a lot of the players to express themselves in an attacking way. You, know, you need that platform to be able to do so. So it's clear that in this game at Kingston College, in their, their efforts to be expansive um, and express themselves in the attacking way, they're going to have to be mindful because this Excelsior team looks like they can create problems on the counter. Tegan's back. And I'm sure Excelsior is hoping that that is not going to be the case against them today. <laughs> the Clarendon College is in the 1 1, boy. Maybe in this case, I just like the purple and white. It's close to a school, but you that I'm associated with. <laughs> that could be it. That could be it. As we take a look at the offside call, which was correct. Oh, he does well, Bernardo Robinson. Robinson inside the box, plays it across, and Rogers was trying to get a head on that one, and there's a spectacular effort that Peter Smith was equal to. The effort coming in from Dwayne Atkinson. And this front three for Kingston Collin, College. Atkinson, Rogers, and Robinson really causing a lot of problem for this back four for of Excelsior. Too much. The Sean Joseph there. It already is looking like a good contest here. Yeah, not a bad start to the game. Definitely at a higher tempo than the first. Raymond Watson, the assistant coach, in conversation with Fred Lugodard. So often with coaches and assistant coaches, um, Donald, is that you find that with the well-organized teams, not all coaches are just looking at their team. And an assistant may have the responsibility to look at the, op the opponent and decide what they're doing and how to get the better of them. Just an FYI, Raymond Watson's son is actually in the starting lineup for Kingston College. We'll get to him in a, in a moment. We can get to him now, actually. He's actually playing left back for KC the number 14. You can spot him in the shocking color orange boots over on the far side. I think he would have earned his place in the team as well. Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> he actually was the under-16 captain last year. Lewis Watson, so another one to make his transition to the senior team. Let me speak to the type of system that we'll have at Kingston College, and if that continues, they may be at the busy end of the season or contending for titles for a while yet. Would have been one of the players who Represented Cavalier and got better Tottenham in the Cayman Cup some three years ago. It was an under 14 tournament in the Cayman Islands. And Lewis Watson, who's taking the throw now, was a part of that squad. So we can say the boy has got talent or has been a part of winning teams. Winning teams normally have good, talented players. <laughs> <laughs> that is also true. Watson with the long throw. Defended by 
Excelsior, the shot coming in from distance is wide of the mark. I thought there was a handball in there somewhere, but the play didn't stop. And just now we saw Rogers winning the second ball, and that's what a KC will get with a, a player like Rogers. A robust, uh, industrious, he's going to be always busy. And so in that final third, he's going to give you that chance to win those second balls and hurry defenders. Burton. Rogers. That was fouled. I'm, I'm telling you, that's what you're going to get. He's, he's, he just knows how to play one way. No wonder he's a track athlete as well. Distance run on tool as well, which means there's no slowing up for him here. No, no. I know a thing or two about the distance running. I I, I did that at one. I've never had my silver medal for the school. Really? I, I've, I've won, I did win four cross country in a row. <laughs> Never heard of you. Here's a free gift for I was going to free your time. <laughs> <laughs> Jamari Morrison with the effort straight to the keeper. Didn't handle it well for Peter Smith. Well, he has to sort out whatever is going on in his mind because he doesn't look certain about anything at the moment. And that was pretty much straight to him. Through the wall, mind you. Yeah. But straight to him. See a flaw in his technique. He feels like he could hold that one. He neither punched it or tried to hold it. It was neither here nor there. Lucky to get away with it. Here's the corner kick. Headed away. Watson loses it. Excelsior can break. They have numbers forward. The touch was loose the second time around, but the challenge was also late. It's going to be a free kick. Yellow card here going to play yeah, from Kingston College. Oh, number 22 there, McLeod. And again, it wasn't necessary. The ball had I think he bailed, been kicked away. I think he bailed Smith out there yeah, with that so. challenge. I think so. Let's confirm the other card to Scott McLeod. Noel Ratchery is the one behind this for Excelsior. Some way out, but the ball has been set up. I think Ratchery is considering going direct to goal. And it was high. Again, I would have loved to see a little bit more thought going into it from that distance. Well, he did think about it and kicked it. <laughs> Give him credit for that. <laughs> <laughs> but certainly, um, I think at this level, we do want to see some creativity in the free kicks. God, not taking no prisoners and putting that one into touch. Offside. You see where uh, lots of females are coming into the, I mean, the officiating in the game. Here we have a female assistant on this one. Over on the far side, Kamish James. Not a lot to cheer about in the opening 22 minutes. They've had a couple of moments early on, Kingston College. 
compared to the other champions who were on display today, I think Skinson College supporters would be the happy of the two sets in terms of what they have seen so far from the team. Here's Atkinson. We know he has speed, but he's no Superman. Couldn't get that one. Does he get it too far ahead of himself? Too long. Rogers pleading for better service. Poor ball from Alex Wagner. That should be Alex Alexander. The player. Who's Alex Wagner? <laughs> There it goes. Here's Kingston College. Only you could tell. <laughs> I couldn't. <laughs> I really couldn't. <laughs> probably, probably almost subconsciously, I didn't want to repeat myself and say Alex Alexander. <laughs> Gavin, McLeod, Burton, his teammate had to make the hurry clearance as he was sold short there. Robinson nods it, well, trying to nod it in the path of Rogers. Picton with a long ball of field, couldn't find a teammate. Blair trying to find a teammate. Does in Morrison, the captain. Morrison, too much on it again, looking for Rogers. There's no way Rogers was going to get that. He was facing square on and there, his teammate. And it wasn't side on looking for the ball to be played into space. That one had to go to feet. Not sure if I'm impressed with the field. But then again, as I said, this is the third match. That's being played on it in less than 24 hours, and there's one more to come after. Portal College against Irving, the third game of this triple header. Morrison, robbed of the ball. Atkinson trying to get by his defender. Morrison made his own trouble there. He, he had an outlet, um, and he chose not to use it. And that's what you get sometimes, a delayed pass, meaning that you're a caught in possession. Robinson. Ronaldo Robinson! And again, not a lot of power behind it, but at least he's on target on this occasion. Again, he's cost the shot. Again, it's composure. Keeping calm and just looking to open his body and curl to the far post. That was just a hurried attempt here. He cuts inside beautifully. He just needed some elevation and opening up of the body and guiding it to the far post. Noel Rattry. There's a chance for Excelsior. Yeah, and there was a lack of composure there as well from Jaheim Clemens. Was the under 16 captain for Excelsior last year? Would have been a part of the team that lost 7 0 in fact to Kingston College. And I don't see that 7 0 happening today. Either. But on that play, I think Gardner did very well. He sent him on his weaker foot, people left foot, he wanted to go inside, but Gardner only showed him the outside.
that's not a bad ball. Robinson probably needs some help. Pulls it back. And uh, it was always going to be difficult to place that one. You can see what he was trying to do with the oncoming midfielder arriving late. But again, the surface, I think it just bubbled before he kicked it. And so he couldn't get over it as well as he would have wanted. Again, I'm not impressed with the surface. Maybe the heavy traffic on it, as you say, three, three games in, in less than 24 hours. It has always looked good, so to speak. <laughs> but not play good? Yeah, there, there, there are usually quite a bit of... Quite a few dents there. Quite a few. So the surface is, the air is not so not so that level at okay. all. When you try to play a ball at the all along the track, and you can see the bubbles that the ball makes. And that's something that is really needed when you really ask your team to play good football passing game, you really need a good surface on which to execute. If you just know that if a pass remains on the turf, which is why I can imagine my players long up for the long ball. Atkinson inside! Robinson again! Off the crossbar! Now that had power! The KC fans think that it crossed the line! It certainly looked like it did. I saw the net look as if it rippled. Um, Has the goal been given? It appears so. The referee did point to the middle of the park. It seems as if a goal has been given. Definitely. Is Robinson, fourth time. That one had the power and the placement. And according to the assistant referee on this near side across the line, we'll get a better look here. It did. 1-0 to Kingston College. That one did cross the line. What a strike that was. And well over as well. Well over. And that, not, that one had not been given. It would be brought back to England, Germany. Good for Frank Lampard. Exactly. And that was clear. And this was very clear. That was a good execution, as I was saying before. Finishing as opposed to shooting. And this time, he executed well. And moments before that, a similar ball was played back, but just a bubble and it didn't execute. This one, he allowed it to run, settle, watched it, got over it, finished with a plum. Well, that's a run out of Robinson, I know. That was a good finish. I mean, the signs were ominous. He was always getting into space. I don't know with the early signs in the game, Excels is still affording him so much time and space. Yet... He's a busy player, so I can understand for defenders. It's you cannot switch off at any moment with Robinson. And then what happened with that one too? He was allowed to go inside. Allowed it to run across and then finish. His face is, says it all. More of the same. Well, Excelsior looking to get the equalizer. Oh, he needed more composure. Stefan Smith. He skied it, though. That was a good opportunity to get back in the game. Good ball played inside. He just found himself in a pocket of space. Defenders three yards away from him. And he should have hit the target at least. It's not the easiest of technique though coming across, you have to open that body because you can't kick further than the hip. No, you can't. No. So if you, don't, if you don't open up enough, then you will not get a shot off at the right angle. Burton. Watson. Gardner. Robinson, Watson continuing his run, can he keep it in play, he 
Let's throw for his team. Again, there you see Rogers hurrying the defender. He is he's not gonna make life easy for any defender as he comes up against. Which has a lot to think about here. with the possession. It's, it's just going to have to do better while you're in possession. You're playing against a team that is much better than you in possession, so you're going to spend a lot of time in this game chasing it. So when you do have it, then you're going to have to take better care of it. is from the Kinson College team. They trust each other because even with the opponent in the back of their teammate, they will pass. Just keep the ball moving. Here's Excelsior on the charge. The shot straight to the keeper, although he was offside. Jaheim Flemings. You can see what Fleming was trying to do. He was trying to open himself up and, and shoot to the far post. Yep, he was. That looked very close. Very close. Chance again for Ronaldo Robinson, utilizing his speed, trying to get by Alex Alexander. Here's a chance! 2 0! That was actually Blair. Such a Blair! Gets the second goal for King from College, utilizing his speed well as he made his way inside the box, was a little bit lucky as well. And he gets the second goal for King from College. Sajar Blair, his first of the season. And KC leads 2 0 over Excelsior. Again, the signature move. The, the first goal came from a player cutting inside and laying off a pass to the oncoming. Uh, midfielder again the player was allowed to come inside not a bad finish that was cool calm composed this Kingston College team is definitely overflowing with good ideas going forward But this one, she's going to create a lot of problems in the long run. Right, I think so. If they stay fit, I really do think so. And although he started nervously today, Calvin Gardner, I think acquiring his services is a big deal for Kingston College. Huge deal. When you're playing attacking football, you really need that base, that foundation to allow you to go forward and express yourself. Burton, cross to McLeod. McLeod finding Jamari Morrison. Blair again, the challenge coming in. A little bit more forthright from Rashawn Amos. What Blair is doing here, Donald, is he's making runs from deep. He's a central midfielder as well. And he's breaking from the middle, coming wide. Blair. Fires this one across. Excelsior try and come away with it through Rajan. Rowe Joseph looking for options. Found, tried to find one, but Gardner again in the way. The player runs there on track. He gets into those here. He gets the ball free. It was a lovely play from midfielders. You want your midfielders to be doing that. 
is creating overload against the fullbacks. McLeod to Burton, Burton to Watson, Watson to Rogers, or almost, got a knock to his face, free kick to Kingston College. I wouldn't say that the scoreline is unfair, but Excelsior, they've had their chances in this one as well. Yes, it could easily have been 2-2 in this one, based on the chances that Excelsior got. But mind you, Kingston College did get a few that they just shot at goal. Yep. Which is why I don't think the scoreline is unfair. <laughs> True. Burton. of pass there from Gardner. See, yeah, it doesn't look as sharp as so far in this game. Gardner. He's a calm player nonetheless. He is. Has to be. Well, that was a foul. Burton was pleading his innocence. Not Get any there. Get to his charge. He's known for his right foot. Gavin Burton scored an absolute screamer against Gavin Maceo in the All Ireland on the 16th final last year at the number four for Kingston College. About 40 yards. Guess he'll be looking to execute some of that in the in this stock of the cup season. It's a step up, but if you are quality, you can fit in at a higher level. Yep, and he's been given that pivotal central midfield role. If you notice, as we said with formation starting out, uh, Excelsior tried to match Kingston College in the middle of the park with three central midfielders. But the two goals for Kingston College came from midfielders breaking from the middle and balls coming from the wide areas and coming back in. So they are exploiting the wide areas here at uh, Kingston College as they get into the final third. And maybe there's a plan as well because both goals came from their right side, the successes left side. It's something that they've worked out to realize it's a weak area for the success of the team. Junior Parker. Okay, Duffus. Ball given away. Here's KC. This is Dwayne Atkinson. Atkinson's effort. Just about handled by the Excelsior defense. And that move again started from Rogers deep. I mean, he's playing the, the front three for Kingston College. The Rogers started through through the middle and Robinson on the left, Atkinson on the right. It's a fluent front three. I mean, they will change their position throughout the game. But a wide player is expected to go deep to support the fullback, and that was Rogers coming from deep, starting the play. This one is ripped in, and again explored by Smith. And the flag has gone up for offside, I believe, yeah. I think it's fair to say that we're going to see a lot more of this from this Kingston College team. They're going to be shooting at will at uh, this Excelsior goalkeeper, the Peter Smith, has not still any form of confidence.
Lemmings, Joseph, a oh, nice collection there. And uh, it's a play called back. Will be a free kick. It seems to excels, yeah, yeah. As soon as a judge to and the player back. Yeah, I thought Pickton did well to get away from Watson on that occasion. I mean, judging from the first half, we've seen Gardner, uh, a new acquisition for Kingston College, been a part of a lot of their efforts to break up any sort of attacks coming from Excelsior. And he's really been a good addition to this Kingston College team. Is Excelsior. Challenge coming in. Remember that you can vote for your man of the match at watch.sportsmax.tv and you can begin voting during the halftime interval up until the 85th minute of the game. Your vote counts. Two minutes added on for stoppages and this one. The captain's did this for itself, so Terry Duffus. That's not a bad delivery at all! And that's a massive chance for Excelsior! And it went to Noel Rattree who's had a couple of attempts, but that one was his best chance at the back post. It really was. It was a good head right there. And as you've been saying, Excel said, they had some chances in this game. Duffus again with the delivery. Still not clear properly over the bar. And uh, that's going to be a goal kick to Kingston College. Well, Ratchi appears to be nervous about scoring against his old school. He definitely needs to show away that nerves. The school needs him. Yes. His new school, that is. <laughs> they need him. They need him. Burton intercepting the play, and that's pretty much it for the first half. A half that Kingston College, the Manning Cup champions, they would be pleased with. They have taken two of their chances, and believe me, they have had several. Such our player opened, well, finished off the goal scoring after Ronaldo Robinson had opened the scoring. And Excelsior, their captain, Tariq Duffus, they have a lot to work out in the dressing room. After 45 minutes, it's Kingston College 2, Excelsior 0.
Jamaya Petty Grove is the assistant coach at Excelsior High School. Jamaya 2 0 down and a defensive error that led to that second goal. How do you fix this? Well, we just have to keep them focused, talk to them at half time and let them know. Concern. We just sit in concentration and give up the goal. Just in the last minute of the half there. So that's the only issue you're having with the team, the lack of concentration? Yeah, we need to press the ball some more. I give you KC too much space to play from midfield, so we just need to close them down some more. I don't think we can get something from the game. Thank you, Jamal. All right, thanks. Herman Watson joins me now, and he's the assistant coach at Kingston College. Herman, you're always smiling, and I'm sure you're happy with the lead so far. Yes, definitely, but I thought we could have gotten at least two more goals, but give credit to Excelsior. They also got some looking at our goals, so that shows that defensively we weren't sound as I thought we would be. Now, you're always willing to tell me what's going to happen at halftime. So, what's going to happen at halftime? Uh, you'll see Christopher Pearson, number eight, and I think you'll also see number 20, that's Shavon Gill. Christopher Pearson will come into midfield. Uh, I haven't decided our minds as who he'll come in for yet, and Shavon Gill will come in on the headlights. Finally, we see your son Lewis on the pitch. What's it like coaching your son? Christopher Pearson also lives with me, so it, it seems I have two children. So, at first, Eddie, 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 but... Sometimes it's good now and sometimes it's still idiot. Right. Thank you, Coach. Thank you very much. Raymond Watson there telling us all the secrets to Kingston College's halftime talk, who they'll be bringing on, and of course, Excelsior High, they want to press more and stop Kingston College. We're at Catherine Hall. This is the second game in the ISA 2019 opening season, Kingston College 2, Excelsior Hill. <laughs> Welcome back to the Montego Bay Sports Complex in Catherine Hall. We're here for the opening Manning Cup game in Montego Bay. Kingston College, the defending champions against Excelsior High, they're leading by two goals to nil. And we have the water halftime highlights. Look forward to. And we'll be seeing those highlights in just a little while. But just to remind you that Ronaldo Robinson scored in the 30th minute. And uh, young Blair, Sajar Blair, scored in the 36th minute of play. And here are the water halftime highlights. Jamari Morrison with the effort straight to the keeper who didn't inspire confidence. Pepito Smith, that one going through the wall. And uh, Robinson with a cracker. And uh, that was a very good goal. Had three attempts before this. Either they were weak attempts or they were wide. This one, powerful and direct. And there was nothing to Peter Smith could have done about that one. Clear goal there. And in the 36th minute, Kingston College will go 2 0 ahead. Useful speed there by Blair. And then a very good finish. Really. Composed there, Sajar Blair. Nobody plays in the right back position for uh, Kingston College, but being utilized in the middle of the park and his speed was used to good effect on that occasion. And uh, Casey going 2 0 up again. Say it again for Peter Smith. He didn't spare a lot of confidence, and his defenders had to bail him out on that occasion. Rashawn Amos with the clearance. As we take a look at the half-time statistics, 10 shots are for, for Kingston College with 6 on target so far. I'm not sure you work on that for Excelsior, but uh, 6 shots on target. Uh, fouls committed, 4 for KC, 2 for Excelsior. That's the one yellow card showed. 4 offsides against Excelsior, the 2 to Kingston College, 2 corners to Excelsior, to 1 for Kingston College. While the possession reads 53% in favor of Kingston College. All right, all right, all right. What's the final score prediction? I'm sorry? Final 
Man's corporate action. Well, they're getting five love today. Five piece combo. Man has corporate action, beautiful. Yes, I know that both. So about three love. Three love. What's the name of your son? Jamar Morrison. Big up your son. Big up Jamar Morrison. Casey, number 10. Forty-five minutes to go in this one. Kingston College against Excelsior. The Manning Cup champions lead by two goals to nil. And uh, we are here for the start of the second half. And Excelsior will be making a change. On comes Daniel Clark. And he's going to be replacing Junior Parker. Which, if you are to be honest, isn't much of a surprise. Didn't see a lot from Junior Parker in that first half. And we're on the way for the second half. And the short story of the first half, Kingston College took their chances. Excelsior High didn't. The question is, will Excelsior take their chances in the second half? Burton. Almost worked that pass to Armania Rogers. That was a foul throw. Burton winning the header. It's lined up for an effort that's just wide of the target. Bounce favorably for him. Not sure if Peter Smith knew a lot about that one. He's giving too much room there. Defender is not applying pressure. Right on the top of the penalty area. You do want to apply pressure. Here's KC. This one is played across face goal. Did Peter Smith get a hand on it? Nope. Okay. It's not surprising that they come on shooting. I guess part of the instruction at halftime would be uh, a lot of attention given to the goalkeeper from Excelsior, uh, Smith, as his hand in his poor. And we've seen shots coming from all angles here. Sajar Blair with the effort, looking for his second goal of the game. Oh, that almost went through. What can Excelsior do in this one? Not a bad pass. Daniel Clark. Well, that didn't make a lot of sense for Noel Latcher. Made life easy for the defender. Who? His well position was close enough to apply pressure, but definitely the attacker made it very easy for the defender. Here's KC. Atkinson beats the keeper. Can't keep it in play though. It's a very good solo run from just got away from him at the last minute. But driving at the heart of the defense to excel the defense here. Showing good strength as well. A 
I'm telling you about this one three here. Definitely going to cause a lot of problems in this mining cup. Rogers. Taking to do a lot of thoughts here. How can he get back into this one? Is it was number three. the successful team in the second half will have to try and, and stop a lot of those penetrating passes and runs being made by this Kingston College team. It just seems like they don't have high enough pressure in that final third. playing the 4-5-1 system and having so many players, so many bodies behind the ball, you want to think there should be a plan B in terms of when you go behind, when you need to be more attacking. Because what we're finding is that the lone striker in Ratri can be left isolated, which we're seeing here. Almost so short on that occasion. He's not good with his hands, and he's proven he's also not good with his feet. All as he has, it seems, is a big frame as a goalkeeper. Looks young in the, in the place there. I wonder what age looks a young player. Ball to Vaughn Smith. And Duffus could make the crossing. Despite getting a few look ins on goal here, Excelsior, what we have not seen is much creativity in the final third. Just one time enough. <laughs> this one is sent inside the area, and uh, it's held on by <laughs> David Martin, who isn't young in the face. But about Peter Pe <laughs> about the Peter Smith, who is young in the face, we just heard that he's actually 18 years old, so he's been around for a while. I've been around for a while, not on a football field, I think. <laughs> and this is an under-19 competition, so I don't, I don't, I don't, depending on when he's born, which month of the year, I suspect he, he doesn't have much. Probably just turned 18. Yeah, so. Well, we're hearing that he actually transferred from another school to come to Excelsior. So Excelsior, Excelsior actually sought him out. Well, it speaks volumes to what they had, you know, in terms of goalkeeper. The quality must have been much worse. But it's the opening game in front of other fans and the cameras, so you never know. Yeah, you go, goalkeepers usually get tremendously better after one game, so, you know, there's that. So there's hope. 
Yeah, so with the cameras around and all the shouting in the, the stadium, yeah, it could be his first time. So, you know, we'll, we'll keep tabs on him throughout the campaign and see if um, he does improve. Well, that's one of the things on Leroy Tavidon's mind at the moment. And with that type of goalkeeper you have, if that's the case, you're going to have to be more organized in front of it. Oh, yeah. We have seen, we've seen teams win championship with not the best goalkeeper in the competition, but they had a solid defense in front of them. From midfield to defense, you have to be more organized. And playing five in the middle of the park, maybe he has to look at playing two holding midfielder, uh, uh, one who is really a, a, a gladiator, one who breaks up the play, a pivot type that passes into the other who makes the passes but definitely they're going to have to screen this goalkeeper because at the moment just is too much happening mind you he's up against one of the best teams Challenge is coming in from everywhere. In the end, it's going to be a free kick to Excelsior High. Who really, incidentally, to start the game very well. It's just after the first goal went in, it just got so difficult for them. And Kingston College really begin to change gears. Duffer sends it long, headed away. Keeper is off his line. Very good work at the back. And here's Picton. Couldn't keep him play. Apparently not. Not a lot happening in the football game. Not much at the moment. It's just back and forth. And not, well, at least in the middle of the park, it's, there's no goal much activity at the moment. That suits Kingston College more than anything else. I mean, they're leading this one by two goals to nil. We haven't seen much difference from the Excelsior team coming out in the second half. Nothing to <coughs> threaten this Kingston College team. Here's Casey again. Morrison. Nice ball. <laughs> I'm not sure who he was trying to set up. Obviously, we see the Excelsior defender there, Ronaldo Robinson. And there's going to be another change made. But Blair, I think he's, he was intended for Blair. But Blair and, him and Robinson were not on the same wavelength. Christopher Pearson is coming on. I think he's a real quality player. Physical Pearson. Replacing Gavin Burton. 
Appears to be a crowd favorite, Christopher Pearson. For a half time assistant coach, Watson. Here's the cross inside! Oh, it's right of the target! That would have been spectacular from Rogers. What a ball that was to Armania Rogers, who tried to pull off one of the best goals you'd have seen in Montego Bay. And it was wide of the target. That's coming from a player with confidence for you to try and execute that. Well, wait. In the end. If he met it well, just his angles were off, but good at some good, good attempt there from Rogers. Oh my goodness, this is a blown off the lid. One of the grandstands roof here where that had gone in. And certainly this boy Rogers is a coach's dream. I mean he works hard, he he hustles defenders. I mean he just keeps going for the entire 90 minutes. Just confirm the change that person came on for Burton. Here's him taking that one short. Can he deliver? Sends this one at the back post and the goes too. In front of Rogers, they are looking. If ever a player deserves a goal based on their work ethics, I mean, in this one, Rogers certainly is one of that. And he, he has over th just about 30 minutes to, to get that. Atkinson. Here's a chance! Saved by Smith! That one was fired in, it really was, and Smith was in the right place at the right time for Excelsior. It was a good save, and he gathered the second goal and spilled very well. I think that was Morrison with the effort there. He met it well. It's very little as he could have done, except, you know, I guess a bit further towards the either post, but it was a good attempt by Morrison. And again, it's from a ball coming in from the wide area, cutting back inside and playing the unrushing midfielder. Alexander? Trying to do too much there. Here's Casey. Excelsa, can they get a goal back? Trying to force the pass, didn't work on that occasion. Duffus. in that space. Can run at the defender, decides to cut inside, takes a shot and yeah, he's getting better for Peter Smith. Certainly tending to prove us wrong. Not taking any chances, just putting it into touch. You suspect the third goal for Kingston College isn't too far off. I mean, they're just lining up here. Can you keep that one in play? Yep, yeah, he does. Here's Watson. Trying to deliver that one to Rogers. Keeper punches it. Here's a chance for KC! Saved just in front of the goal. Blocked just in front of the goal, I think. This one, delivered inside again, looking for Rogers. Here's Atkinson, straight to the keeper. 
Again, that seemed to have been Amos who blocked that one on the line. That was good defending. Your keeper, the keeper came and he just went and covered the goalkeeper on the line. Had he not been there, that would have been goal number three for Kingston College. Game really opening up as Excelsior tried to chase this one. Rogers manhandled on that occasion. Watson will slow it down. He's all KC. There's 11 players for Excelsior in their own half. Wow. Well, they'll have to come out of it now. That's a foul. Gardner was late. Very late. Gets the other card. This is a correct call here by the referee. Very late. All he got was a player. Nothing up the ball. In his hometown, we definitely want to put on a good show. Gardner has done well so far. It's an embarrassing attempt as a shot. I suppose the less said about it, the better. Excelsior set to make another change. Joel Joyce is getting ready to come on. And he is replacing Noel Rattray. He's had a couple of chances in this game, Noel Rattray. Chances that he would want to forget. He switched the play. It's a good ball. Couldn't quite take it in his stride. Young player. He comes back to foul. The Excelsior player, Sitar player. It's good work there from Watson. You want that from your, your players to have that recovery run, to recognize where danger is and get to that point to thwart the attack. They're trying to get his charges to success the team to create something. So our player really working over time for Kingston College. Doing a lot of running. Rashad Amos was not trusting his goalkeeper at all there. And based on the evidence of things here, you can see why. But there was a lack of communication there, and you suspected the goalkeeper came without communicating that he was intending to do so. And that was never good for a defender. corner kick to Kingston College. Morrison with the corner kick. There are five Kingston College players inside the box. At the back post is Atkinson, kept alive and headed behind for another corner by Rajan Joseph. Keep it came and all he had got was air. 
Did he didn't go out there with his hands? He did, he pulled out. Yep. That's strange. That was clumsy from such a player. He gets it back though. Blurry looking to deliver, decided against delivering it inside the box. KC, they give the ball away. Poor ball there. Gardner, calm and cool on the pressure. Joseph, couldn't find a teammate. That's going to be a big problem for Excelsior in the rest of this game, is that they come under siege from Skinson College team, who commits a lot of players forward, but they don't seem to have enough speed to hit on the counter. Offside against Kawanya Rogers. Not sure that was the right call. But I'm sure it wasn't the right call. He was well on side, but the ball was played. Four offsides apiece. So yeah, I am thinking that's where the problem comes in here for itself. So because they would have to try and play on the counter coming under the siege, but they, they just seem to take a long time with the transition. That was Roger's last contribution in the match. Siobhan, Siobhan Richardson just came on. Siobhan Gale. Can see of the attack once more. Blair trying to scoop it to the substitute, Wade Williams. Blair has been busy and bright, has a lot of confidence, just didn't have the end product there. But he has been very good when he gets into that final turn. Williams, almost, wins it back. Atkinson picks it up in an outside position. Apparently. Yep. Now that was clearly outside. But again, Blair making those runs from deep in midfield, going why to overload in those wing back areas really creating problems for this excelsior team every time he goes forward it appears as if a goal is going to be scored delightful ball inside to williams cuts it back and the finish is emphatic to win at kingston on the score sheet to now make the score line emphatic Kingston College 3, Excelsior 0, the champions running away with it. For a minute there you thought the chance had gone and he cut it back, but I guess he knew what he was doing. And with Atkinson on the prowl with a good finish, that was wonderful. We look at it here, beautiful pass. But then the cutback, you felt the defender would have gotten there, but beautiful. Very well played. Very well played. And Atkinson accepted that one gleefully. Again, Rogers is off, but this front three, I'm telling you, Donald, is going to give 
and lots of problems. Well, it's given exhausting on the problems today. Definitely. And we felt with the run of play that we were seeing with a, a barrage of attack coming from Kingston College, we felt the third goal was coming. And sure, it, it did. Joel Jones, not sure what he was looking for on that occasion. Williams. I love how he's just finding the passes since he's been on the park. That's a delicious ball to Atkinson. Atkinson! There it is! There is the Kingston College groove! That's their fourth over Excelsior. Nothing Smith could have done on that one. And the fans are related, so too. The coaching staff. Fabulous football once again by the famed Purples. Who are running riot over at Celsius at the moment? That to me was the pick of the bunch, the pass over the top that cut out the defender, mm -hmm. and just the cut back inside. That was a glorious relationship between foot and football. Absolutely wonderful. And the finish, the finish, sublime. He's saying that he can be the main man, Dwayne Atkinson. And the two goals in two minutes for Casey's number 13. It's a lucky number tonight. You said it was his favorite number. And he done it because if he is, it brings him luck. That finish did justice to that pass. score in Atkinson. But they're turning on the styles, no. I guess you can't blame them. Four goals to the good. Against opponents by reputation you would have thought well, yeah, that could give them some problems. But this is a KC team in the groove. It does speak to the program at, at Kingston College. He can't take an effort from distance, Pearson! <laughs> you know he's the one taking the shot. It comes off as a firecracker. But that was high. It had pace, it had venom. Just needed to dip a little bit. But it had the, it had Smith very much interested until it passed over the bar. He has a right foot about him. Young Pearson. Don't be surprised if there's more to come. If he only has, if he only adds that defensive maturity to his game, I believe he can walk into this Kingston College eleven. Christopher Pearson, right now he's a, a substitute, but he can see the quality just losing out of him. Number and, eight. And you're right, Donald. When you're playing a middle three, you need that defensive part. Good run by Morrison. Chancellor for KC. 
It's a good ball inside the box. That's not a... Well, it wasn't the best one. <laughs> Williams had to retrieve. It's still alive. It's with Robinson. Deflected effort. No problems here for to Peter Smith. But just about this, uh, just a, a boat where the square was about to come across. It's, I was looking and I realized there was no one at the back post. Kingston College did not gamble in that area. And had someone been there, it would have been right on the plate. And here they come again. Watson. But he likes switching the play from time to time, Watson. Didn't come off on that occasion. But they are playing with no pressure now, Kingston College. Look at the time that Gardner had on the ball. As I said, Excelsior sits in deep, but they don't have the pace to break on the counter. I, and so definitely there's no way getting back into this one. Even before it was four, we saw that. Well, Dina Campbell comes on the park for Ray and Picton. Watson will just bang that one high, not quite into touch. McLeod helps him out. He'll try it again, Watson. KC with the possession. Finally. When you look at the KC team here now, and they're showing good maturity. It's about managing the game from here on in. There's 10 minutes to go. You're leading by four goals to nil. And they're just keeping possession and waiting for the right moment to go forward. Pearson. Using the size well. The last couple of plays here by Gardner has not been as smooth and silky as he normally is. A few passes going astray. This is the first game of the season for Kingston College, and normally you get better as the season goes on. Mm, nice touch. Excelsior, can they get a consolation here? Why? It was a goal with your name on it. And they kind of just rubbed it out. But he decreased his chance of getting a goal here when he went for the near post. In that position where he's from there, he would have had to try to go across the goalkeeper. That would have increased his chance. Have you heard about the substitution? Tomorrow McCarthy was getting ready to come on. And he is coming on. Tomorrow mm -hmm. Morrison is the one he's replacing. Mm -hmm. Morrison had a good game in the middle of the park. Is one of the reasons why Kingston College really had the superiority in midfield. 
<laughs> well, if he has to wait a little bit, because in the change he had to get the the shin pads. We'll get back to that in just a moment. Had to get the shin, the shin pads from uh, Jamari Morrison. And a glimmer of hope there for Excelsior playing against ten men. It was just a glimmer. He's finally on the field now. Jamario McCarthy had to wait because he was putting on gear. On the touch lines. It's a regular sin here by footballers, young footballers. They don't want to think that they would invest in themselves and their talent by having a shame guard. But so often you see that with players. I'm going to assume that he left it because everyone was branded with jackets with their last names on it, right? As opposed <laughs> to shame guys. <laughs> he must have left it. <laughs> I'd agree with you That's there. That's the only explanation. You can't have fancy jackets and no shin guards. No, no, sorry. Priorities. Unless he's going to wrap the jacket around his legs or something. <laughs> Kings and college players down. I'm wondering if it was a head injury. If it was the play. Would or should have been stopped. He's back up now, though. Ball has crossed the line. Another change? Of course. Kicks of college. Hernan. And here we see the fourth official, Coombs, telling Robinson that one, another one of the rules that came into effect that he had to exit the field from the nearest point, and especially because his team is leading. So there you have it again, another one of the new rules being implemented here. When Walker comes on. Watson. Challenge coming from Tariq Duffus has had to do more defensive duties more than anything else in this game. Playing along that wing. Atkinson. Too much on it. It's difficult at this stage as a coach for the Excelsior team. Now, I mean, all you have to do at this stage is to look towards the next game and damage limitation because you never know in a, a group whether or not a goal difference are going to be important. So the final three minutes. Crucial. There's here's Casey again. All played inside to the substitute Walker. It's with Pearson. He was trying to get any amount of space that he could have possibly got there before he could let fly with the right foot once more. He almost got through there. Almost. He yeah. once heard that almost doesn't count <laughs> though, so there you go. Had it was a death touch that he was trying to just barely scoop it over in a tight area. So, so that well, that didn't end well at all. But to the entertainment of the crowd, and he gets a salad to do it at the <laughs> end of it all. I think it pretty much sums up Excelsior's performance, especially in the second half. They really 
were blunt in terms of their attacking adventures. Nothing coming from them. Well, they have a lot of learning to do, Excelsior High. This has been some test. Douglas. It was impeded there, David Martin. As far as the man is concerned, Dwayne Atkinson with a couple of goals and the fact that he's been in instrumental all game. Here he is again. Not the best pass forward on that occasion. And that final goal is worthy of any man of the match on the <laughs> yeah. Three minutes of salvages to be played. The crowd has grown here in Montego Bay. There's quite a few of them will be, well, would have come because of the third game of the triple header here involving Coral College playing Irwin High. And looking at the composition, color composition in that grandstand, yes, you would want to think so. Red, yellow. You do know that the seats are red and yellow, right? Well, I'm not seeing much seats. Okay. <laughs> They're green and yellow. <laughs> Here's a free kick inside the area, and that bounced into the area of uncertainty being there inside the penalty area. But this has been a good first outing. Not only did they get the three points here in Kingston College, which you want in your first game, but they they have done so, continuing where they left off last season, easy on the eye, fluent going forward. Walker. Oh. He got tripped there. The referee says, play on. And they are playing on. Walk goes fouled. Three kicks taken quickly. So Kingston College did lose a couple of their players um, from last season, but it goes to show that whatever program or system they have in place, the Cambria line does not seem to, it doesn't appear as if it's going to be drying up anytime soon. For the most part, they have dominated the under-16 competitions over the last three years. It's always a good indicator that uh, they will be there or they're about to be the end of the season. When they lost to St. George's College, there were some alarm bells. For those who weren't there and saw the score, mind you, I think St. George's College have one of the best teams of the Manning Cup and probably should be one of the favorites. Having been to the final last year, some people make them the favorites for the Manning Cup this season. Outside flag goes up. And that would not be a surprise. I mean, St. George's College has always been there at their boat. Play beautiful football as well. That's the end of the match.
Kingston College have made the statement in their opening fixture of the 2019 Manic Cup season and what a statement it was. One of the goal scorers, a jar player there, the number 17. All this before Dwayne Atkinson did the double at the back end of this contest to make it comfortable for the famed purples. And at the end of the game, they would be pleased with what took place. Butler Bernard in particular, having a word with Ezra Campbell. Bernard was always confident. Excelsa will have to go back to the drawing board, having tasted defeat in no uncertain terms here in Montego Bay. But at the final whistle, it is Kingston College 4, Excelsior High 0.